This is the kitchen light. I've been using three 40 watts incandescent appliance bulbs in here. Not because it's an appliance bulb, but because that's what you can still buy. I want to try using some different light bulbs in here today. These are the bulbs I want to try. These are CCFLs, or cold cathode compact fluorescent lamps. So I guess it should be CCCFLs. I bought a whole mess of these from the stupid eBay back in the 2010s. Of course, this was back before the site became totally egregious. And these were pretty cheap. I think that they were some kind of a, a liquidation sale or something like that. I have boxes and boxes of these, of these bulbs. I have 3 watts and I believe 8 watt bulbs. I think there's a combination in here. So I think that I think that these, which are the TCP CCFT03CL27K, I believe that is a three watts bulb, and I think that the 8TF05CL is a an eight watts bulb. The 3 watt ones I think have an incandescent equivalence to 15 watts and the 8s I think are 25 watts. Well, I'd like to show what they look like but I don't think I can get it out of the box. Alright, here we go. So this is a smaller one. I think this is a 3 watts. Yeah, this is 3 watts. Is this the 8 TC or TF? This is an 8 T03. So it appears that this is the odd one out. Go figure. <laughs> That's not what I wanted to open. What I was trying to open was one of these. These, I think, are the 8 watt ones. Cold cathode is an interesting technology that's really getting quite old. It never caught on for like a general purpose light bulb. I don't really understand why because it doesn't really have many disadvantages compared to CFLs, at least not that I'm aware of. Um, but it was very widely used in monitors. There was a lot of CCFL backlit monitors in the 2000s, you know, early LCD type monitors. So CCFL lighting was pretty, pretty common, commonplace, but just not in an obvious way, like with a light bulb. So you can see this one has a lot more, probably almost twice the tube length as the other one. And oh, this is only a five watts. Okay. As you can see, these are very high efficiency bulbs. Now a cold cathode, unlike regular fluorescent tubes, does not wear out upon startup. So these are ideal for applications where the lights turned on and off frequently. Now there's still a thermal cycle, so arguably it would still be better just to leave it on, but it's not like a regular fluorescent light where you're really wearing out the bulb by turning it on and off. So this is the TCP 8 TF05CL model 8TF05 cold cathode bulb. It's a 5 watts, 0 0.046 amps. Self ballasted. I believe that these are suitable for use with dimmers. It's not explicitly saying it, but the fact that it's not saying it's not usually means that it can be. Um, it does contain mercury as most good lighting products do and I guess it's waterproof if used like this. He's got a nice flame tip to him although <laughs> if it was frosted that would probably be a lot more aesthetically appealing you know with the flame tip because you can't really tell you know like if it was um, like this bulb is it would look a little more decorative, but 
I mean, this just kind of looks ridiculous. I think it's cool as a lighting collector, but to the average consumer, this is probably totally ridiculous. All right, let's put a bunch of these in my light here. I have used the, I have ones like this, which are just clear. I've used a bunch of these around the house over the years. Some of them have pretty good number of hours on them and they're still going. These are rated for an, some astronomically high number of hours. I'm not sure if it's 20,000 or 50,000. It, it's a lot, it's way up there. It's kind of a shame that these didn't catch on because they're pretty good. At least I think so anyways. I want to start using these around the house more often because I have so many of them and they're a good, pretty good quality of light. And unlike incandescent, these probably cannot be stored forever because they have a ballast in them, so there's components that are going to wear out over time, like capacitors. Okay, let's put these bulbs the in. Okay, the bulbs are installed. It's on the light. Now there is a significant warm up time with these. And I guess that's one of the reasons why people didn't like them. But there's also a warm up time with CFLs, at least some of the earlier ones. So I don't see what the difference was. You can see it's got a pink hue to it as it starts to glow. And then the, the uh, fully illumination, the full, illum the full illumination starts to move up. I gotta go talk on the phone now. Okay, they're all warmed up. Oh, I didn't put the microphone on. Okay, they're all warmed up now. And uh, I was gonna film the warm up, but it was more important to talk on the telephone. So here's what they look like now. There is a, uh, I guess you can call it a flicker or a refresh or it doesn't look like it's flickering to me, but I don't know. Obviously it is because there's banding. Now these have a very bright white kind of appearance. It looks to me to be kind of like maybe 3000 K. It's not necessarily a cool white, but you can tell it is warmer white than those CFLs over there, which are a 2700K. That's a pretty good color comparison right there. This just kind of, you can tell it's a fluorescent light. It's got that kind of fluorescent appearance to it, whereas those, you really can't tell if those are fluorescent or incandescent. So let's put the cover on and see what it looks like. I'm hoping that since the, the glass has some yellow to it, it'll kind of take out that coolness of the color and be kind of warm again, but I'm not sure. The three watt versions of these bulbs do not look like this. They are almost indistinguishable from the incandescent. Uh-oh, these barely fit in there. Yes, it does take out the, uh, the, um, that, that cool, coolness to the light. You can tell it's, I can still tell it's a slightly different color, but it's nowhere as near as obvious with the shade on. Now we can dim these down and they dim very nicely. This is quite dim. It's actually not all the way down. 
that is all the way down now and it is in fact quite dim now this is gonna focus there we go this is quite dim and there's no flicker the only problem is it doesn't uh, the light doesn't turn golden as it dims it just stays the same color temperature and this is all the way down so these really dim quite nicely I'll slowly bring this up I'm going to lock the exposure on the camera so you can kind of see it go. Come on. Okay, now it's locked. So I'm going to slowly bring it up. Pretty smooth, consistent dimming response. That's full brightness, so go back down. Yeah, not bad. There is, I, I guess it's a flicker. If, if I look across the room really quick, or if I move my eyes, I can see a flicker in the bulbs. If I look right at it, I don't see a flicker in the bulb. So it's, it's semi-distracting as I move around. Um, but it's not that bad. It's definitely, it's not noticeable standing still. I can only see it when I'm moving and only if I move really quick. If I just like, I'm just gonna walk by the light, I don't see it. It's only if I turn around real quick, which I don't usually do. So this is probably not gonna be an issue. I will say the lower wattage ones, which are these, the 20, the five watts, I'll open one of these up and see what these look like. These are definitely, they have a better quality of light to them. They have no flicker. See these, the, um, the bulb is just, it's the same thing, but it's a little bit shorter. These have zero flicker, at least that I remember when I, from when I've used them. And the color is indistinguishable from uh, incandescent. Though I really, really like those bulbs. The only problem is the 15 watts brightness equivalent is not the most useful. You know, that's really dim. Um, it's fine for ceiling fans, but if I want to put it in a lamp, I usually like at least 25 watts um, for lamps. All right, so that's interesting. So I'm going to use these in here for now. And once they're warmed up, they are instant on. They're flashing. I think that's only because of the dimmer. I don't remember them flashing in the past. And no, this does not wear them out. I remember there was a video. There was a video I saw many years ago. It was um, like some kind of a, at an amusement park. It had like the lights, light bulbs all around the outside of this sign. And the light bulbs were like a chasing pattern. And it had these in there. And I remember people typing in the comments, people that don't know any better said, how can you put a CFL like that with it turning on and off like that? Well, it's not a CFL, it's a CCFL, and it's immune, uh, not immune. Um, it, it, the, the cathodes don't burn when you turn it on, so that it doesn't wear out like a, a regular tube does. So this can be turned on and off throughout the day. And the, the startup flash doesn't bother me. I don't know why it's doing that. I think it's because of the dimmer. I don't recall these ever doing that before. Now we can prove it. I'll unscrew one of the bulbs and screw it back in and see if... Yeah, it is the switch. Because it doesn't flick like that when I screw them back in. So the dimmer is causing that, not the bulbs. What if I turn it off with the other switch? This is a three-way switch. Yeah, it still does it if I turn it off over there. Alright, so we're going to use these these uh, TCP bulbs in here for now. This is another instance where I really need to get my, I need to find that lumens meter. I think it's a lux meter. 
uh, because I'm, I'd be curious to see what the difference is in output between this and the other bulbs. Let me turn the rest of the lights off and see. I don't think it's quite as bright, but it doesn't seem like it's super dim either. Turn all these lights off in here. Let's see. It's, it's definitely dimmer than it was before, but I, I can't really judge how much. I would say, hmm, so before it was 120 watts total. This is maybe like a 60 watts or 75 watts. It's not very bright, but it never was. Um, and I can tell now that it's the only light in here. I can tell it's, it's a little bit cooler. It's maybe like 28K or 29K uh, coming through the shade. But this, I would use this light at sometimes at night when I, if I get up in the middle of the night to get a drink or something, I just turn this down and, you know, it's, it's not blinding in the middle of the night. Uh, and then, you know, throughout the evening, sometimes I like to leave this on if I'm moving around the house a lot. I just leave this on all the time. So, all right, cool. So we'll have these bulbs in here. This is only drawing 15 watts now. This is a plenty of light for 15 watts. It's not dark in here by any means. Um, let me see, that's, that's about what it looks like to me in person here. Looks about that, that bright. So it's not bad, but you know, this is a, a, a center of the room light that I don't like because the problem is that if I go in, actually this is a really good example of why I don't like to use this type of lighting. For instance, if I go here to look at this telephone and I stand here, I create a shadow. That's why I don't like ceiling lights in the center of the room. That's why when I have ceiling fans with lights, they usually just get 11 watt bulbs because it's just for the aesthetics of the fan. And this is kind of the same concept. This is this light is here really just for aesthetics. This is a very important light in my collection. It's very nostalgic. This was in my grandparents' kitchen back in the 2000s. So I have it here now and it's a nice memory to have. So, all right, we're gonna use these TCP 5 watt CCFLs and we'll see how these work in here.